This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this is the show where we talk to people uh, in and around independent professional wrestling. And of course, please go check out everything and support things over at IndieWrestling.us and all the other great podcasts at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Drop us a line at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0 if you have any questions for any upcoming guests that we may have announced on the Twitter and the Facebook page or or, uh, or if you have any suggestions on people we should talk to, we have to fill out a couple of spots over the holidays. So if you want to see anybody, especially like return and do anything different, anybody new we should be talking to, let us know. We do like to reach out to some new talent. Well, uh, this is this is a night of uh, uh, some interesting interviews. Um, some people have, have had fun experiences with the RWA audiences, and uh, <laughs> we are going to get into a few of those stories, but back with us, also to give us his side of the story, because we had his tag team partner John Roden on a little bit ago, Bronco McBride joins us here, one half of the Renegade Wrestling Alliance Tag Team Champions. Welcome to the show. Thank Finally, you. we've been trying, how many years have I tried to get you on this show? Whoa. How many years? <laughs> I want to point out, it took your tag team partner getting here first to motivate your ass to get out here. Well, I, uh, well, to be fair, the first couple of years, my job, you were doing just on Tuesdays, and my, my shoe job was Tuesday at 10 o'clock is when I got off. It was a block shift. So, to be fair, but I'm going to say, let's see, we started training in 2010. I think we were maybe like a year in when you started bugging me, so... <laughs> About seven, six, seven years. Yeah, six, seven. Was I, years. Was I bugging you guys back in the blue collar slaughterhouse? Oh days? yeah, yeah. You said, "Hey, oh, come down and get on." I was like, "Oh, it'd be awesome!" And then cars were breaking and stuff. Just so, uh, so seven years in the making. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> oh, it started funny. off entertaining. We got cops going by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had Marshall busting into the, exactly, the studio. Yeah. You know, it's it's great. It's, it's great. It's a great beginning. So, anyways, uh, for those who don't know, you we like to do a little icebreaker here on the show. Um, so <laughs> I'm sorry. We, we have in the chat room, uh, John Roden is, 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 uh, harding every time we mention his name. So man, uh, so what is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? You know, I knew you're going to ask something like that and I can't honestly, to remember. your recollection, like what, what, what kind of sticks out? I can't honestly remember. I always just remember watching wrestling. Mm-hmm. Like I don't remember a time like when I was, when I was younger, like I, I grew up with my grandma, I lived with my grandma, and there was a bunch of us in the house. And I remember I don't remember who turned it on, but I just remember always watching it. And I remember I was a big Stone Cold fan, obviously, you know, who wasn't. But I remember probably around probably something with Stone Cold would be my, my first thing I've seen, but I just always remember watching it and the more I got into it, like my grandma became a big fan of it and people you know people It really uh, Stone Cold really gets the grandmas, doesn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's John Cena now, but you know. Yeah. He's, oh, he's I haven't the seen guy. the John Cena grandma contingent yet. <laughs> but but they're not flipping off the cameras like my my in laws grandma. So <laughs> <laughs> so so pretty much attitude era on. Yeah, man. I mean, like as early as I remember watching TV, like there's only two things in my entire life that I religiously watched for TV. Like I'm not big on TV, but. Um, wrestling and Sons of Anarchy were the only two things that I religiously would turn on a TV and I'd be sitting down for it. Okay. That's it. That's okay. I mean, everything. I mean, I'd watch other things, but I wasn't like, oh, it's 10 o'clock. I got to be here. I got to be there. But for wrestling and Sons of Anarchy, that was it. Those two things, they had my attention enough that I would stop whatever I was doing and I would make sure I saw the brand new episode. That's an interesting mix. So is it was it a lot for the, for similar reasons that they both, uh, you latched on to both of those things? <clears throat> I didn't, I, when I started watching Sons of Anarchy, I didn't, I wasn't a fan of like the very first episode. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of Harley's dinos. I'm, I'm not, I mean, some, but like, I can, that's what 
the opening scene is Jack's riding a Dyna, mm-hmm. a Dyna Glide, and I'm like, uh, I'm not a big Harley guy anyway. And I'm like, man, nah, nah, and I just shut it off. And then like season four was coming out. I think they had like, you know, they had four on Netflix and I thought season five was coming out. I watched like four seasons. I sat down, I watched it in like a couple of days because I worked a block shift Sunday to Tuesday and I, I watched it. I think like Wednesday I discovered it and I was like, I'm going to sit down and give this a try. And I did. And I was like, wow. And then this Tuesday season, I thought it was season five coming out. So I looked and no, uh, it was season six. So I had to run to Walmart and I had to grab <laughs> season five and I had to watch it because it wasn't on Netflix yet. So that, and I mean, like, you know, Eight nine o'clock and whenever it's been on wrestling, it's just, you know it's Monday. Mm-hmm. You know that's that's what got me through school when I did go. I was like, oh, it's wrestling. I go and watch wrestling. But yeah, that's as long as I can remember. That's that's that like that was the thing. That was my only thing. Uh, we learned from uh, your partner's uh, uh, interview that uh, it, this seems to be the, the thread that kind of pulled you guys together early on as well. That's exactly how we met. Was mm-hmm. wrestling. He moved up from Beaver Falls, I believe it was. <clears throat> and he sits down at the table, and the table I sat at at lunch, like, w- well, when you see me in the ring, I'm not much of a likable guy, and I like that's that's me most of the time. But I don't, mm. I'm not, I'm not a people person. I can vouch for that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not. A, yeah, I'm not a people person. You know, so I just, I kind of do my own thing, and you know, I have a few select friends, and I just keep it at that. Well, I, we all sat at a table that it was just like people that we knew, like from our grade, you know, seventh grade, high school. And we're just sitting here like, eh, well, we know each other, so we're sitting here, and it is what it is. And he was just this new kid with this giant head, um, <laughs> right? And he's sitting across from me, and my school was... Which How I, old are you guys? I, I'll be 27 in a co- like a week. I'll be 27 in like a week. No, I mean, how old were you then? Oh, then, like, well, let's see, seventh grade is like 12, 13. 12, 13. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. had that big head forever. Okay, okay. He grew, um, he grew into the he head. He grew into the okay. head, yeah. And so... So he he sits down and at the school it was the big like oh you know like I didn't have any other friends in there that watch wrestling because like every most schools no one no one openly likes it it's a little secret like go go home and watch it but then mm-hmm. you come to school oh, stupid well he just goes like does anyone like wrestling and I was like right here I was like this is the guy and we just we talked like all lunch we ended up having study hall together we started talking about it and then that just started what we doing you know we would get together for pay per views or do this and that and. It was wrestling all the time. Like we started wrestling around. You know, we had trampolines and stuff, and we made we did. You know, I used to cut school, and I never liked school anyway. I wasn't I wasn't big on school, so I, I cut school and I'd make like uh, cardboard titles. I mean, I'd tape them up and I cut out little you know little designs and stuff. And like I mean, like I, I put a lot of work into it. We we'd put uh, stuff on YouTube. We'd edit videos and stuff. They're all taken down now. It's horrible. But like we like we really like that's all we did like just talked about wrestling lived wrestling and then as we got older we just decided like you know maybe maybe we can give this a try mm-hmm. you know because we were you know it's a small town we were just kind of like yeah you know, that'd be cool to do but is that possible and my aunt had just moved down to georgia and her husband had like a big commercial roofing business so i went down to um to help work he had like a big job and I'm helping work, and I said, "Oh, there's this school down there. I can't remember the name. It's like the W W A four, whatever it's called, in Atlanta." So I went down, and we went in. They had like Wednesday shows, like an hour long, just for the guys training, just you know, free come in, just to get them experience in front of a crowd. Mm-hmm. And I go in there. There's like four rings in there, and like all this stuff. Like it's a nice little setup. And the guy's like, "Oh yeah, Dave Taylor just left like half hour ago. You just missed him." But I was like, "Oh yeah, that's, that's cool." They had this giant chair, supposed to be Andre the Giant's chair, or whatever. Like it's huge, you know. I don't. Know so is it like the, the the Ripley's Believe It or Not, where they have the the world's yes. largest man's chair? Or yeah, something you walk in, you, and you, in. You, you walk and look to the left, and there's the chair, like this giant chair, you know. And I think there's a picture of Andre on it. We talked to them, and I remember it was like we were discussing it, but you know, we didn't, you know, moving the whole way there, and we didn't, we didn't have any money saved up. This was all, you know, like wow, like, you know, let's give this a shot. And then mm-hmm. he comes and says, well, um, I, I attended this Night of Legends wrestling show um, a while ago, and there's this place, IWC, you know, and they're having tryouts and stuff. You know, and this was, like, mid-2009. And he says, I think the next tryout, I think it was, like, January or February or something. So we go, and I said, all right, you know, we got a hold of everyone, you know, sending our stuff, our information. 
and it was set like January something was our tryout date. And so that was 2009 and I'd never had a lot of money growing up or never had like family or friends that was in wrestling, but his dad and his brothers, they were all in wrestling. So his dad would take him to like local shows here and there. Well, we ended up bragging rights 2009 came to Pittsburgh yeah i remember that i think that was my first show ever being to like i was i never got to go to an indie show that was my first show as bragging rights really yeah and we were way up in the news isn't that the one where uh randy orton almost blew up john cena i think yeah yeah i remember i remember it because um somebody bought the dvd and there's like a silhouette of us we were in the nosebleeds and there was a camera behind us so we were like Dude, there has to be one clip of us on there right and there's like as DX came out for the tag team match, the SmackDown versus Raw, it goes over and you can see his giant head, his brother's head, and I had a ponytail. I had long hair then, and I had a ponytail, but I still had my hat on. So you could see like the bulge from my ponytail sticking out. And like, oh, there we are. And it was a quick glimpse. You, you can never tell it's us. So we only know because his big head, my ponytail, and his brother. So that was that. And then I think we went to a show at the fairground somewhere. I can't remember. I can't remember what the name of that show was, but then later that day they were advertising, hey, there's a show up in um, Erie, which is PWR, and we, we kind of looked at each other, and I was like, I'll drive. You know, I, we, I drove to the fair, and like, all right. So we jumped in the truck and went up there, and you know, we just like started, you know, went to a couple of these shows around the area until January come around. We went down, tried out. You know, I think there may have been like five or six of us there for the tryout. You know, we go down. I'm not knowing at all what to expect, but you know, and it's both of you, you, you and Rodan were there yeah, together. Yeah. yeah. He, he was already, he went down to his mom's. So he was already like down here in the area. I came from home. So I drove two mm-hmm. hours and I go in and I, I think I didn't even have a card time. Like my card broke or something. I was in the middle of fixing it. And that happens to me all the time. <laughs> but so I go to ride down, we get down there and you know, we go there. And, um, now at the time, like I didn't know any like local close guys, you know, I didn't know any local like Pittsburgh wrestling guys, you know, I wasn't on the up and up for it. And we go down there, Jimmy DeMarco's there, Super Hentai's there, and Chuck's there, Chuck Roberts, he was the owner at the time. I can't I think someone else was there. And then Shimo was there, or DJ Z, you know. Mm-hmm. And we did our tryout and stuff. Like, all right, you know, I'm gonna talk to them and we'll call you and stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, I went pretty quick, you know. We, you know, but, you know, they had us do all this, you know, bumps and rolls and, you know, the whole give you a little bit of everything, kind of see how it goes, you know. And I think it was like a week or something went by, you know. All right, we'll wait and see. And we had the phone call, like, oh, yeah, if you want to come, you know, go ahead. You know, like, we're, if, if it's something you want to do, was, uh, yeah. And then I called him, like, all right, I guess we're in. I guess, you know, it starts here. And then the very first practice we went to, I missed the first one because, I don't even remember why it was so long ago. I usually have a pretty good memory about things, but I think there was some, I had like a family emergency or something. I can't remember, but I went to the second practice and the very first practice I go to, it's the night after homecoming or prom. I can't remember. I got maybe an hour's sleep. I'm hungover. We go in and everybody's standing there like, um, super hentai standing there, DJ, DJ Z standing there. And they're just, they're looking like serious. And I'm like, what's going on? you know what is this like this doesn't you know this feels like you know i don't know something's wrong well we had a clear fold show that weekend and because like we, we did get a pass because we lived up here like you don't have to drive you know three hours down and help unload you know just be there as soon as the rain gets there set it up help do whatever you know you know part of doing everything well the guys that were from down here they pulled in and as they were pulling out, they didn't wait that long. They were pulling out, the ring truck was pulling in. So they didn't help. So Super Hentai goes, well, we're going to do this first one as a class. This is punishment practice. And I was like, all right, I'm hungover. <laughs> I had like maybe an hour, two hours of sleep. This is great. We started off with, I don't even remember, a bunch of squats. We did Japanese push-ups. We did leapfrogs. We ran, you know. I, I want to say one of the guys puked. I don't remember. And the whole time, it's like, well, we didn't even do anything. I, I got through it better than I thought I was going to being hungover and not feeling good. I don't know why, but we got through it. And then maybe like 10 minutes at the end of class, we, we learned lockups or something, something real quick, you know? All right. See you next week. 
So it's crazy. Like when he said, you know, he was, I was the one that had to keep him in it because my very first one was punishment, you know, and I'm hung over and I'm like, oh. but I mean, we got through that. And then uh, he, Henta's like, well, after this, you know, you guys, whoever, whoever messes up, you can pay for it on your own. First ones as a team. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. We won't screw up again. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we talked about a little bit about that session of the practice. I think it, it, it ended up weaning down to just the two of you guys and DJ Z for the training, right? <clears throat> Yeah, the one guy got hurt halfway through. He, it, it, nothing serious, but it scared him. He took a bump wrong or whatever, yeah, yeah. and he was like, uh, "I don't, I'm reevaluating my life. I don't think this is in it." And the other guy was like, "He's he scared DJZ. He scared him like some of the, like, he was like, dude, like you, like we." He took a hip toss and he tried to Jeff Hardy it every time, and he, you know he tried to do this one. He's like, "Stop doing that. Stop. You're gonna break your neck." And he like. He would brush his head and he made him stop. Like, you're not doing it anymore. He's like, I'm like, you, you know, and he, he tried to make everything, you know, he's, we're just trying to get taught the basics and he's trying to go superstar mm -hmm. and, you know, and he's like, well, I think the class is going too slow for me. But it's like, no, you're trying way too hard. And I think he went off and he like tried to, he tried to wrestle some places. I think he maybe did a show mm -hmm. and, I got footage of it, and he stole like all of DJ Z's moves that he was doing at the time. <laughs> I was like, "This is great," you know. Like he just, and then it just became us two, you know. That was just down to the two of us, and that was that. I mean, it it was pretty quick too. So the responses in the chat room were pretty wow. good. <laughs> was it Sean Phoenix? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> uh that's awesome so and this is you know again i, I told this a little bit on on the uh, the rodent interview too i'm sorry we have to bring him up all the time since he was here first but uh but it was always it was always interesting just watching you guys um in general like like you came out your blue blue blue, blue color, color slaughterhouse, slaughterhouse and uh i remember all the words didn't know if they were in the right order and they, you were these two kind of redneck guys but you were Definitely trained by DJ Z by what I was seeing. I mean, you're still doing moon salts like they're nothing. I don't, I don't, I don't pull them out a whole lot. Just try to keep it rare because mm -hmm. most people don't expect it from me. So you keep it rare, you know, it looks better. But yeah, we we went and we, I think he had us. He's like, well, I'm gonna try. You guys do like an assisted backflip, and I could on a trampoline. Like I grew up like when I go to trampoline, I I could do anything on a trampoline almost. Mm -hmm. uh, I could do backflips. I could do a six thirty. I could do six thirty backwards. And Shima goes, well, whatever you can do on a trampoline in one jump, he's like, you could, you 90% chance you can do it off top rope. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can do 630 in one jump. I'm not trying that off the top rope. <laughs> but he had us do these assisted backflips. And when he did mine, I got up really high and stuff just from, you know, doing it constantly. And, yeah. and I had a decent jump and he was like, ah, oh, all right. So then he like had us doing step up ranas and, and everything. He, he had us doing the, that where Daniel Bryan runs into the corner and he does the backflip mm -hmm. out under. He wanted us to do that. I mean, he was just boom, boom, boom. And I think he had low rider up there shortly after. Mm -hmm. And then he was showing us all kinds of crazy Let's stuff. Say, was, he, was he doing a lot of lucha training at the time? I think that might have been later in his career. Who? Uh, DJZ. Yeah. Like he, there was like, I believe one time he came and he's like, oh, I was down in Mexico, you know, for, for whatever. Mm -hmm. And he got to train with like Grand Apache mm -hmm. and he was all so stoked about it. Cause he, you know, he was a big fan of him back in the day. And he's like, this is what I learned. And so he got, you know, he learned stuff and this is what he showed me. And now we're going to do these drills or do this, or I'm going to show you this that I learned. So it was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Cause as he's still going out, you know, cause you know, you never stop learning and wrestling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's going out, he's learning, he's coming back, teaching us, you know, and then he brings low rider. He was down there doing stuff with him. So he's teaching us. And I mean, it was pretty cool. It was pretty interesting. Like he kept trying to push us further. He's like, wow, you can do that. I want to see this. I want to see this. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, we, we did pretty good. Um, Logan Shulo, or Elias, I guess now, he was down for one. There was like the Wednesday practice. I think um, it was him, Justin Idol, a couple of other trainees, and we were all down. And um, Shima comes in the next week, and he goes, yeah, I was talking to Shulo, and he says, yeah, man, you could tell they were trained by, by you, the one – or the one dude's doing backflips, and the bigger guy, he's running up the ropes and doing arm drags. And he's like, <laughs> whoa, it's crazy. So, yeah, like there's a little hint of it sometimes. That's great. Uh, of course, they debuted with IWC, uh, a pretty big, probably you know, one of the biggest groups in the area, of course. And uh, you guys were in, in the tag division. Uh, I, I know, you know, from the you know talking to Roden before, this seems to be where things started getting a little off the rails 
as far as things go. You were tagging. I think you had some guy named David Demira uh, stepping in every once in a while. Wherever it happened to him, I know. Uh, <laughs> we're still looking. We're still looking we're still for looking David for Demira. He's, he's been lost for several years now, and nobody knows how to fix that cage. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, uh, tell me a little bit about your experience there early on as a tag team, uh, kind of debuting as one, right? Yeah, well, we're at practice, and we kind of had the, like, oh, you know, we grew up together. Like, it would be cool if we were a tag team. Mm-hmm. Well, the guy over there was at one of our practices. That would be the Marshall of Bull Gambino <laughs> off camera here. He goes, uh, <laughs> it was him and Jimmy DeMarco. He goes, he, he he's looking at us like this, you know. This By this time, it was just the two of us. He's like, you guys ever think about being a tag team? And we both just got a big smile on our face, looked at each other, like, well, yeah, 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 what do you think? You know, and that was cool, you know. And Gambinos, they were the big tag team, you know, in IWC. And he's like, you think I should be a tag team? And I was like, that'd be cool. You know, so, which we already, you know, we didn't know how to bring it up, you know, mm-hmm. like, hey, because we're still, we're early. Like, I got my name early on. I got the Bronco name early on. He got the Matt Sigaris name early on. Mm-hmm. And, like, DJZ came up with... You know, he's like, oh, try this, this, and that. Because he, he was at a Clearfield show, and his vehicle broke down. So we went and rescued him and stuff because he's not a car guy. And my grandpa was a mechanic for many years, so most of the family knows at least a little bit. So I stopped. I was like, well, yeah, you can't, you know, you can't fix it tonight. You're going to have to either go get the part and put it on, which I'm not doing because it looks – there's not enough room in there. So you're going you're gonna to have to get towed. So he comes back to – Roden's house, and we had like a little, I don't know, a little sleepover or whatever. But <laughs> you, we, had slump, you had a DJ Z zump. Yeah, <laughs> but we, I mean, we didn't sleep. We were just up all night, you know, brain picking, you know, yeah, yeah. just kind of talking and this and that. And he, he, he came back, I want to say a few weeks later, and he goes, My God, you know, you guys are the blue collar slaughterhouse, you know, because you got that blue collar this and that. And he just explained our lives and everything he saw. And he goes on this 10 minute pitch for me. I got the name, you know, I remember being, I don't know, somewhere down south. He's in this this wrestler. His son's legit name was this. He never said the name. He's building this up. I mean, I'm just pumped. You know, I'm excited. You know, we're maybe four or five months in, and I'm just, you know, I'm ready to go. Like, yeah, I mean, he, he has me. He's building it up. And then, you know, this was his, this was his son's real name. I was like, you got to be a wrestler. It's perfect for you. He's like, Bronco McBride. And I was like. Okay, and then he just looks over at Roden, who was Matt Sagaris time. He goes, "And you're Matt Sagaris. Sagaris is Persian for battle axe." <laughs> what? That he goes, "Sagaris is Persian for battle axe." I got a ten minute speech on my name where he came up with it, and how he thought, and he goes, "Bronco McBride, you're Matt Sagaris. That's Persian for battle axe," and that was it. <laughs> and I was like, uh, "Okay," and I was like, "I don't want the name Bronco." And now I, I would have been stupid if I didn't take it because mm-hmm. I don't I don't know any other Broncos out there and everybody people in my in my daily life that friends that knew me forever call me Bronco now like everybody calls me Bronco I don't respond to much of anything else because I'm just not used to it so he gives us a pitch and I remembered I printed out a list of names like I I was thinking and I mean I put so much thought into this and I fought it for a good two months two three months. I mean, I sent names to to Justin Idol. I was like, "Do you have any ideas? Do you think any of these look good?" Like, here's here's why I thought of each of them, you know. And I I sent names to Shima, and he still was like, "Ah, it's this and this and that." Bronco McBride, man. <laughs> Everybody started calling me Bronco. We go to the shows, Bronco, because Shima started doing it. I was like, "All right, all right," you know. And then it, it stuck on me. And after a while, I was like, "This is stupid. Why wouldn't I take this?" You know, mm-hmm. like it sticks. But we started wrestling, and like we were doing good, and you know, everything was going on. We were, we were excited. You know, everything was coming together. And we were working almost, I think, every show. You know, I don't remember missing any. And we started branching out. We were doing pretty good. And he, there was still, like, you know, times where, and he didn't mention this. I, I watched his podcast. He didn't mention this. But the time that he was talking about whenever we were supposed to face Jimmy Nuts and uh joseph brooks yes yeah they were just coming in we were supposed to face them at a, at a proving ground mm-hmm. well joseph brooks had a wedding that like a year in advance or whatever yeah, he's in the wedding he couldn't make it something like that and so idol comes up hey you know i don't know if you heard but it's just going to be you and jimmy nuts and Roden was of course like yeah you're disappointed you know mm-hmm. he had a few friends and family come down and like i get that but 
there was a certain referee that rode with us, and he was just that that's bull man he could this is proving ground you know it's you know these trainees are young and they can be switched around you know they he could make a tag match for you guys but we're we were supposed to work some stuff with jimmy nuts and him it wouldn't make sense Mm -hmm. you know and of course he got in his head and he twisted him up a little bit whole ride home i'm just shut up don't listen to him Mm -hmm. i mean i understand it's easy for me to say that i'm wrestling you're not but, it, it was it was somebody that just kind of got like hit the right nerve yeah like he yeah. was he was disappointed anybody would be and then he yeah. was just like boom 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 well that ended up happening and the reason why i was told is why i was picked because he had had one of his little stints where he he was like i don't know problem is he'll get negative back in the day he would get negative and he would act on it a little too quick he would like mm-hmm. hey man i don't know if i can keep doing this and stuff and you know, I'm trying to figure out my personal life and stuff and get it all together. And so because he kind of did that, they're like, well, you know, Bronco's been here, yada, yada, yada. But we're going to throw him on. And that's just, you know, it was, other than that, it was just basically flip of a coin. Yeah. And so we came out of that and he was, you know, he got a little disappointed in that. So these were things that like kept weighing on. And then we were supposed to, how it was pitched to me, like we were supposed to have this, you know, big, uh, angle with the the gambinos and stuff like we we even we did a few matches and we i remember there's a promo on youtube i just saw it the other day in fact um where we attack them and i drive Roden's car and i hit mickey <laughs> stuff yeah it's on there and one of the funny things if you watch it and because it's so dark outside like when we jumped out of the car like he goes after Marshall. I went after Mickey. I think I threw Mickey down. I ran over to help because Marshall has the upper hand. I'm running over to help him. And I'll, I just saw two guys in black. And the first shot or two was Roden because I couldn't <laughs> tell. On, boom, and I was like, oh, no. And, and, you know, like instantly. But we did that. And then I don't even, I don't remember exactly what happened. Some things went different. And, you know, there just kind of went this way and that way. And we ended up not like, I don't remember why. But we had like a cage match. It was uh, Marshall and Brian McDowell. Brian McDowell filled. And I think that was when Mickey moved or whatever. I don't remember. But around that time. So that didn't happen. And that kind of got him disappointed. I mean, I was disappointed too. Like, it, I was pretty was excited. Was that the West Virginia cage match? Yes. That was ended up outside? Yes, it was the yeah. main event because they couldn't get the cage inside the door. In the door. So we come in the... We're setting up the ring outside. I was like, what are we doing this? Yeah, yeah. Everybody's hot. The ring was so hot. The sun... I mean, that was because we had the black canvas. I remember that show. Uh, one of the guys that worked there like came up to me like like right at the last match. was like, you know, actually, I think we could have gotten the cage in. I was like, don't say that to anybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah don't. That was... Uh... So, so uh, you know... So, uh, the, uh, Sigaris, now Roden, uh, went off kind of on his own, figuring out his life. You can see his interview to find out what happened there. Yeah, but, he, well, he went off, and he said in his interview, right as we debuted, like, we did, like, two last training sessions mm-hmm. just, just as practice with Justin Idol. Yeah. A, two or three, something like that, and and we were just working matches at that point, because mm-hmm. Shima was, he was adamant about, you're I, I, I don't care if it takes two years. I want you guys to look better than trainees when you first have your first match. Yeah. And because he, you know, he said, we're training, I'm training one class. You guys are the first and last. So I want to do it right. And he, he was, he had like that ROH documentary thing going on, one of the three. And then he just started doing stuff with Impact. So he's gone, you know. So, I mean, he's the one with us training every single day, you know. Mm-hmm. So he knows us. He knows what we can do and what we would mesh well and, you know, knows more about us. Whereas the other guys, like, you know, they, they do to a point. So he's not there to have our back. Be like, well, this would be good for them. Or, mm-hmm. you know, I'll try this. Like, oh, I think they'd be really well in this. Or and So we were kind of like. You're, you're going fresh into the bookers at the time and they didn't really know what you were capable of. Yeah. So okay. they're, they're so it's at the point where, you know, he wasn't there. He didn't have her back, so to say. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I understand that. I mean, I don't blame him at all. And then Roden makes his big exit. And I'm like, well. And at the time, we were tag team champions. Not at IWC. I think it was at Five Star or something. And I think maybe Black Diamond, too. I can't remember. But I was like, we have tag belts and stuff. Like, like we're we're doing good you know like uh, mm-hmm. what's like when we're, we're working you know we're having fun and mm-hmm. he's like you know and i i got it you know he had to go and and it, 
I do to a point. Like everything I said in the promos, like it has a real feeling to it. Mm -hmm. Like I do felt like he kind of split and I was just left, you know, okay, now it's just me. No Shima, no Roden. Like I am me. I'm a tag team wrestler without a tag team partner. I now have to reinvent myself. I have to, I have to do my own thing. And I'm like, and you know, of course, Chuck's like, oh, you know, just work with me. You know, we'll, we'll get you back in the loop. You know, obviously, I mean, I get it. I'm a tag wrestler without a tag partner. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is what it is. And I started working, you know, and I mean, it was a little like, you know, well, it's just me now. It is what it is. So I started working and I had a few matches with um, a friend of mine. He's from the Altoona, Johnstown area. His name's Zach Rehm. I had like three or four matches in East Brady with him when Five Star was in East Brady. And I got my confidence level up. And I was like, okay. And I had, I think like on match four or five, and then I started, I was like, all right, I can, I, I'm good now. You know, like I got my mind out of the tag team, you know, part. And now I'm like, yeah, I want to do singles and stuff. And now, you know, I got to tag with this guy again and run back to square one. But it is an interesting thing to see though, because even though we may not get along and life is very different between the two of us, you know, from what was out, was back then till mm -hmm. now. And like we've had some real life personal issues. There's, I think it was a like a five on five match at RWA, and I circled the ring and I turned around and I slapped Roden right in the face, and it was so hard. And I and in my head at the time, I, we just had an argument about something, like I don't remember what it was, but we legitimately like I like I was angry with him. Like legitimately was like you know just shut your mouth. I don't want to mm -hmm. talk to you anymore. Like get away from me. Mm -hmm. As how it kind of ended in the aspect. Like, it wasn't that clear-cut, you know, but it was both like, we're not going to agree on this. It is what it is. And I just, wham, and I slapped him, and I gave him a lot, and just crack, and everything got quiet. And I think, uh, I don't remember, Idol was on that team, and Ryan Edmonds was right next to him, and he goes like this and looks at Roden's face, and, Roden comes in and, and we went at it like legit. I mean, he's nailing me, I'm nailing him. We're legit. Like everything, like we tackled each other a couple times on the outside. It was all And this take. was this was early on in, in what became the feud out there, yeah, right? And yeah. this was all like that was real. Like mm -hmm. if he took me down, it's cause he took me down. If I mm -hmm. took him down, it's cause I took him down. I didn't give an inch and neither did he. Like it got real for a minute. And, and we this went. is and for people that maybe haven't checked out their their feud in, in RWA here. Um, all that available over, of course, at IndieWrestling.us. Um, it was like there was definitely a heightened intensity whenever you guys were in there. It seemed like you were topping the violence from from month to month. There, I know, I know. More recently, there's kind of jokes of like, can we really have another uh, John Roden and Bronco match? Because it seemed like it was you guys every month doing something different. But it was something different, and and oh, yeah. and it stuck out every month. You know, and we and there, there, I mean, there's, there's that pressure that when you work in the same thing to deliver more and more. Mm -hmm. And somebody said to me after one, I don't remember what, what, what I, I don't remember what match we had, but they said something about topping it. And I said, Oh, you should wait till next month, was my line. And that's the one where I was bloody red like the next month. I don't remember the one was before that the pile of chairs one. Uh, yeah, there probably. was the one before that that somebody said something. I said, Well, <laughs> you want to see a top next month? And we just went into it, you know, and I'm thinking, okay, I got to top this one. And then it, it got bloody. And I remember, like, I got hit with the chair all to the outside, and I stood up and I turned. And I could feel the blood. I didn't realize how much was it. For, like, it, it felt like I was in a shower standing under the faucet. And I turned, and I just see all these fans, like, front row. Like, and they start backing up. And then I can it really starts flowing. And, and then I turn to get back in the ring. And I'm grabbing a chair and I'm pulling myself up and I'm doing this, wiping the blood out, and it's instantly coming back down. And I look across and Roden grabs a chair and he turns and goes like that. And I was like, wow. And I'm like, huh. If he's looking at me funny, I must. And I'm looking down and blood's just pouring. So I was like, well, here we go. And I remember it was a pretty good reveal when like your head popped up and it was just like all over. Yeah, because I rode, I rode to the opposite side mm -hmm. of the camera and mm -hmm. I just turned around and I climbed up and just blood's pouring down. So. It was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool moment. You got your crimson mask. <clears throat> yeah, more than once. <laughs> <laughs> um, of, of course, RWA. I, I, you know, the conversation for anybody who's a regular in RWA doesn't 
uh, go without me uh, mentioning the crowd there. And I know uh, we were talking about a little bit beforehand how you've been kind of on the front lines of some pretty crazy stuff that uh, somebody in this room might have started, uh, <laughs> or at least tried to finish. Uh, <laughs> and especially, and again, like you know, with this feud that you're doing, people are, are definitely into it. You know, both as you know, you guys were fighting and now teaming up and doing something interesting with that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that too. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experiences with the uh, the RWA crowd down there in West Newton. I mean, it's definitely. I like the crowd. They, they're not. You get some crowds that are so spoiled. And when I say sport, I mean, like, you have top names as soon as they're at a WWE, you know, they get to see these guys, mm -hmm. you know, whoever it may be. And they're so spoiled and they've seen so much. They're just kind of like, I mean, they enjoy it, but they're just like, hmm, that was cool. Like, and it's like, ah, like, you paid your hard-earned money for this. If you hate me, stand up and tell me you hate me. If you like me, well, tell me you hate me anyway, you know. <laughs> but, like you know, get up and interact and have fun. And I feel like RWA is probably like, it's up there. It has to be one or two, like as far as crowds I've been on, in front of, there was one crowd in Tennessee that probably was it close. If I went there more often, I have a better judgment, but um, I mean, those guys, they get into it. And if they hate you, like, you know, they hate you. Mm -hmm. And in that, and that's what we were talking about. When I came in, I was part of the, uh, the, no, the alliance the circle? yes yeah. the the alliance and it was and i know it changed a lot in the beginning but the two people that i remember the reason why i came to rwa was marshall gambino and super hentai i didn't like i don't remember what i was doing at iwc i think i was still shifting around or whatever and um i hadn't been on like a show or two and because I, I, I mean i was still finding some traction and stuff and marshall goes like oh we're doing this thing down here you know this group you know, you come, come on down and check it out, you know, and get in here, you know, it's a fun place to work. So I come down, you know, and find out very quickly. Marshall has a lot of heat with the, with the fans. Like they don't, they don't like him, you know, and I love, I love, I love, I mean, it comes natural to me. I'm an easy guy to hate. So I love, you know, I love hatred. If you hate me and you know, you tell, I don't care. Like I, like that, that's what, when I come out and someone's telling me how much they hate me or don't like me, like all right like i'm good like that gets me pumped up and we're in front of a it was a pretty large crowd and we had just joined up with the i don't remember the pulpit and um like cicero yeah his group, group. and we were just yeah. starting to call it the new circle yeah, this is jimmy cicero uh yeah he has some history he's been on wb tv a bit well a we bit. joined up with them and we had beaten down Derek and like we're all beating him down and then when we turned and we posed for the camera his suit's ripped off he's wearing this white shirt and he's just bloody now rwa fans they love that guy like mm -hmm. they you know they love Derek. and i mean you know he's he's at the door greeting you on your way in, greeting you on your way out you know like he, he builds that connection and well they were pretty mad and of course there's no guardrails down there. Like it's it's that at home experience, you know, experience that feeling. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take much to stand up, and you're right there. So naturally, you know, I think Gory and Road and a bunch of other guys came down. We all jumped out of the ring, and the crowd's like right there. They're mm -hmm. not sitting down. No one's sitting down. Everyone's standing up. They're kind of closing in on the ring, and I was like, okay, I hentai and Marshall. That's what I'm thinking. I look over. Well, hentai's right here. He jumped out in the same side. I look to my right. I don't see Marshall. Well, he jumped out near the curtain. He probably went to the back. All right, cool. So I'm, I'm doing this because I can hear people, you know, F you, you know, try that on me, bring it on, all this stuff. And so I'm just kind of like, you know, being aware of my surroundings. I look over. Marshall Gambino, not being a big guy, is standing like this. There's these two big dudes in front of him, and they are in his face. And I was like, whoa. I was like, that's not good. And he's surrounded like he's not. I mean, fans are surrounded him. He's not by the ring and they're in his face or, you know, he like there's nothing but people around him. So my instant thoughts like that's not good. And I mean, there I mean, those. I mean, I, I assumed it just started because they were just in his face and nothing was happening. I did one of these. I slapped him. I said, we got to go. And I came running over and right as it looked like to get physical. And I just boom. And I I tackled the dude in the left and. And I think if Marshall explains it, he's used this term a couple of times. A blur of Bronco came out of the left. 
and 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 took that guy away from me and he shoved the other guy back security finally gets over there you know and they're they're pushing us back i was like get those guys back marshall's fired up right and everybody's running their mouth at this point we're backing up and there's another fan closing in and they said something of course he's on fire and he turns to say something i like did one of these pushed the fan back i turned around bear hugged him i was like we gotta go we're way outnumbered and i just started <laughs> pushing him and like all i can push him we almost took out the curtain and got him to the back I think that was like two shows before the cops called or something like that. I don't remember. You have to ask him, but we got back there and I was like, wow. And that's, and you know, like there was that fan, what I had learned later, what was actually said is how he puts it. Well, the fan spit on him and you know, of course, Marshall, he, he's still going out with the fan and the fan threatened to stab him. Well, you, you, you want to threaten, and I understand completely, you want to threaten to hit me or, oh, I'll knock you out. You know, you're going to say that. Mm-hmm. But, like, you, you're going to stab me? Like, and that's that a, was... That's a turn. That, yeah. That, that's, that's, that's a little... That escalates quickly. Too far, you know, and... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, and then, you know, I'm going to stab you, and a blur of Bronco, you know, took out that guy, and that was that. That's how, that's how that story went, from my perspective, at least. Hentai didn't even make it over there because security grabbed him. Like two or three guys grabbed him, and I was like, "What are you doing? Those guys over there. These guys are crazy. Like yeah, we're trying to yeah. get out of here. <laughs> like no, no. I- I'll pull my people back if you get those guys back." Was my mentality. Uh, and with this, of course, you're uh, teaming up again with Rodin, uh, playing Uno with him. <laughs> I'm noticing on the internet, Very trying to get man. along. It looks like a some some sort of couples therapy, as dictated by Doctor Feelbad. I, you know, we we have, um, we have called into question several times over the years his 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 uh, degree to be called a doctor. I was going to say, I don't but, know. Uh, I mean, he's trying. Yeah, he's, he's trying. at least playing the part right now. I, I don't know how far he's going to get with that. <laughs> I mean comes naturally i'm not an easy person to get along with as it mm-hmm. is so, and then you gotta make me try and get along with someone I don't know. It's, it is what it is it is it's a lot different this time around mm-hmm. we're both a lot more experienced obviously um if you watch his interview you know i think you can see that his head is not in the same place as it was back then mm-hmm. you know and i mean i'm since then i've like started single stuff i've got confidence and stuff i was like you know i started you know, getting happy with the things I was doing and stuff and sticking with it. So, I mean, it's kind of, I'm kind of interested to see where it goes with us just because like it was how it was then and now it's something like completely different, Mm -hmm. you know? So I don't, I don't know exactly where, but I mean, we won the tag belts in our first, uh, (laughs) our first teaming. So I guess we'll just have to see exactly how that pans out. All right. Uh, well, I have a couple. I think I have a couple questions. I'll try to back through here. But but in the meantime, I'll, I'll throw one that I always think about every time I see it come out. Is it tough to travel with spikes, spiked uh, uh, elbow or uh, shoulder pads? Yes, because I, I I keep like getting a good close look and like those are those are real sharp. <clears throat> um, I'll tell you a funny story about it. When I how I ended up making them, and I know everyone they just call them the Road Warrior spikes because that's that's what they associate it with. My original idea was I was sitting at the house, uh, Mad Max Road, um, Fury Road came out. And I'm a big Mad Max fan. I watched all of them. Oh, and, amazing movie. Yes. And the chess piece that a Morton Joe wears, you know, and, and it was cool because it was made, you know, like the post apocalyptic, you know, made, like he just puts like symbols on there and like a computer board for something and just kind of pieces together his own armor and his own um, little decorations and stuff. So that's kind of the idea I had. And when I was making it, like I put it all together and I was pretty happy with the outcome. I was surprised. I started, I had a, um, which I think it was Roden's that ended up in my possession years ago. It's uh, like one of those displays you have at a store, like a body display. So I would take it on it, but then that made it even bigger. So I just kind of try and find a place for it, traveling with it. But I was wearing it one time and there's spikes in the front that I added maybe last year and I'm standing in the back and J-Rock is standing right near me and he's, you know, getting pumped up for his match and he gives me a punch because I'm wearing it. I'm getting ready to go out and he gives me a punch 
like right to the chest and he's like, ah oh, and he looks down and he punched dead on the little spikes i had <laughs> he's looking at us and, yeah man they're real <laughs> oh so i don't know if he actually cut himself but he went over he's looking at his hand and stuff and i was like Ooh. but yeah it's 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 not fun especially like if i have a belt or something so like because then i'm carrying the bag and i'm trying to wrap the belt around the bag and i'm trying to carry carry the you know the spikes with me and stuff so yeah it's it's challenging sometimes i'm getting a lot of there's a lot of comments from your uh current and former tag team partners in the chat room tonight yeah i think you'll have a lot of fun looking back at the uh, the, the comments on this video afterwards okay. uh zach rain's out there Mm. and uh he's saying i feel like his mom half the time i'm so freaked out every time i get a message from somebody your partner is bleeding all over the place again (laughs) (laughs) yeah there was a there was a running joke for a while i had like three or four shows and an rwa where i just and i think one i had one elsewhere as well there was like a couple months where every show i got some i got whether small cut or big cut it was around the time of that 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 chair show because i i it hit an artery is what is why it was just pumping blood out mm-hmm. is what you know, the doc told me and before and after that it was just constant like blood like i got hit with something and it cut me open or, or i broke my nose and my nose was bleeding so it was constant you know like oh, is this bronco mcbride gonna bleed tonight and I'm like <laughs> i don't know <laughs> maybe like it's the way my looks going i just might but yeah it was a constant thing so yeah that's awesome of course you guys have rwa as of this recording coming up um on december 8th it is season's beatings you're gonna have another tag team match and uh what do you kind of see this your guys uh current dominance in the tag team division going this time around um and are there other card games you're going to try along the way of uh, getting along i don't know man it isn't my thing so I, I heard chess was suggested. I think by Doctor Phil Bad. I'm not a chess guy, so I don't see. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna have to do to show that we can get along. But Twister. Yeah, I don't know. That might really dance, end dance, up. revolution. Yeah, couples, dance, dance, revolution. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> uh, I'm not rock a band. I don't. Well, we'll see. I don't know. The the there's a wide. Yeah. yeah. What's that? Naked chicken. Naked chicken. <laughs> there's a wide, there's a wide variety of what we could do. There should know. be a poll. There should be suggestions. How do we get yeah. you guys? Like there you go. Put that in there. Um, hit it, hit on the comments. We'll uh, direct all of those to RWA management, and uh, see what uh, what these guys need to do here to get to get uh, get on the same page. So trust falls. Are we going to do trust falls? Maybe I don't. If he goes first, I'll do. A trust <laughs> if he goes first, I'll gladly do a trust fold. You're, you're you gonna, gonna really put your trust in it, though. We we have to. You're gonna wear the height. spikes for yours. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Just to, because you, you just in case, you know, it's for safety first. He's he's an honorable guy. I think he would risk it. You know, right? There you go. Where can people find you online? Uh, the McBride Show on Instagram, and then Bronco McBride on Facebook is mm-hmm. pretty much. Uh, that's pretty much all I I have a Twitter, but I don't I haven't been on it years. It's out there so. somewhere. I tag you every once in a while. I'll see really? You I don't have to get I'll checking. I'll see you I, I don't. I, every time I, we put your match up, man. I haven't. Fu- Roden, I, Roden's all over that. I, I, <laughs> yeah, he's a Twitter guy. I'm not a Twitter guy. I, I'm not I'm not much of a social media guy as far as I feel like. That's why I thought it was cool, you know, doing this interview. Because I'm not. I don't post anything personal. Even on my personal profile. No, no, no. I don't post anything. Like, you don't. Or some people, you know what they ate for every meal. Mm-hmm. You you don't know anything. I don't you know I don't post any pictures really. I do absolutely nothing. And so, I mean, I, so I was like, yeah, you know, it's rare opportunity, kind of step inside and see. But I mean, I I mean, I do I do do the Facebook. I do. I mean, everybody's on Facebook. You gotta have Facebook. Yeah. Twenty eighteen. <laughs> you gotta have Facebook. Uh, I realize I didn't ask best and worst, but I feel like you covered most of it uh, <laughs> of indie wrestling over the years. The the worst I don't know is probably like dealing with the change for me because like not any so much anymore but the constant like uh, okay like oh we don't our trainer isn't here we don't have anyone ever back yeah or, my tag partner isn't here you know mm-hmm. and for a while it was like am I gonna be am I gonna have a tag partner you know I don't know where his head was at um that's probably it and I mean there's always your other little things you know like that go along the way you know like traveling and you know depending on where you go and how far you're going out and all that stuff but the best is probably that 
like not only the interaction with the fans but like the whole it's an, for me at least it's it's an escape i don't like with my personal life i don't have i don't i don't do a whole lot personally for for myself like wrestling's that's that's my thing i look forward to like okay weekends here i get through my day job you know go home do my thing and then like end of the week like okay whatever stress i had like i can put it put it all on the back burner i wake up late as always and i get ready for the show thinking i forgot something and i'm on the road and soon like soon as i get there i'm i'm ready to go like all right what are we doing like what's going on tonight like i'm pumped you know and then well there the worst thing is the ride home is the the last show of the weekend you're going home and it's like oh Oh, back to normal life, you know, back to the boring job and, uh, you know, grind, you know, nine to five all week. So that's probably the worst, like getting, getting out of that whole thing. And sometimes for me, it's getting out of character too. Like I'll go to a sheets down the road and I'll still be in character walking through, you know, and then I'm like, Ooh, I better, I better chill out. Like I'm, uh, I'm on sheets. I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. 2 a.m. when the drunks are out. You don't yeah, want to, you don't want to yeah. be challenging at that point. I mean, it makes it exciting. But... Yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll start looking like an RWA show. Uh, the chat room's going crazy in here. Um, one wrote something about a kissing booth came up. Should we set up a kissing booth at RWA? Winner doesn't have to drive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Candyland, oh Yahtzee, uh, canoeing, snowball fight. Uh, you got a lot of options to choose from here. So, yeah, we'll forward those along. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. Jo- uh, Bronco McBride. Sorry, I'm reading his name in the chat. <laughs> with us tonight and i uh, go check out my uh, rwa and even the early stuff you can find some blue cl- blue collar slaughterhouse over there on indie wrestling.us as well so hard it was to carry him way back and there you go the there you go i mean it really it does close the loop with what's going on now and of course check out everything at indie wrestling.us and our other podcasts and other past interviews uh there and at wrestling mayhem show dot com dot com dot com yes uh and everything else but until next time please support indie wrestling this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com